Hey, my name's Rob Hawks. My name's Chris Blackburn. And this is Training Tuesdays from ISR Training, your Swish sales trainers. Interim period. Uh, welcome everyone to Training Tuesdays with uh, myself, the head of coaching here at ISR Training, Rob Hawks. Uh, my name's Chris Blackburn. I'm the head of sales here at ISR Training. Congratulations. Thanks, man. And uh, yeah, we are, we are a go. So today, what are we covering? Today we are going to be covering advancing. Adva or if you're from the southern coast of the UK, advancing. Uh, or if you're Australian, advancing, I guess. <laughs> Your accents are poor. Uh, they are poor. So um, a quick uh, scale of 1 to 10, how productive has March been for you? On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being you've literally not been doing anything, uh, 10 being it's been the most productive month you've ever had mm -hmm. uh, on a scale of 1 to 10. Chris, how's your being productive TV wise on a scale Product of 1 to 10? TV wise, um, mate, I'm going to have to go with 10 this month. Um, I was able to tick off a, a yearly goal that I was um, very proud of doing actually with yourself as well. We delivered in our boot camp um, that's just gone we last did. week for 20 business owners that came to the Gold Coast. So anyone that's um, been knowing us and, and me and Rob over the time, myself personally, looking to get out of my comfort zone and do things like this and yeah, cool. delivering a face-to-face -face environment. So yeah. um, was able to tick that off and had some great feedback. Good so stuff. absolutely loved it. How about yourself? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say up there with a, with a nine or a ten. I also had my Thanks, first we weekend with my uh, with my daughter um, when my wife was away, so I feel very productive. Um, and uh, yeah, doing the boot camp was um, five, five years in the making because I attended the Swish boot camp five years ago, mm -hmm. and then I ended up, you know, five years later delivering That's it. So very true. I'm feeling very, very good about it. We've got some tens in there, Mandy. Some sevens. Uh, Chris, Chris, Cat, and you're a two, but you're on annual leave, and you just had a baby, so we'll let you off. Yeah. Um, eight April, George was a five. Um, so, and same with on Facebook um, or any other medium um, that you're on. Uh, yeah, a little one, one to ten scale of how productive March has been. But for those of you who missed it at the beginning. Today we're covering advancing, so um, if you want to grab a pen uh, and uh, make some notes throughout this session, but what we're going to cover today is what is advancing, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to cover how you use it, and then some practical language patterns to implement it. Um, but um, define for me what advancing is. Um, so as a definition, well advancing obviously what we looked at is in regards with uh, move forwards in a purposeful way. So. Obviously, that's that's very broad. So I guess revolving that to, to sales, been a, a sales training company. Well, that's the dictionary de definition. It is, yeah. but for me, with, with experience, so the definition is move forwards in a purposeful way. Um, but I believe that with my experience in sales, and, and I'm, hopefully you agree, Rob, as well, advancing it really, I guess, involves creating a mental picture for a, for a client um, and transitions them from where their current state is uh, to a future state where they've actually used your product and service that has benefited them as well. So I think looking to create a futuristic scenario of, well yeah, like I say, with their product and service or your product and service should we say what they currently use and advancing them past the point of sale to really have that feel and have that touch. So I think for me is, is painting pictures through language. Okay, so basically it's uh, creating for the customer um, a, a state of from where they are right now mm -hmm. to where they're going to be and it's our job as the person that's initiating that to paint that picture for them. Is it though? Is it though? Is a good question. <laughs> um, we we did this this morning. We spoke about it in every every Tuesday morning. We mm -hmm. run through this with the team, and it did spark some um, some interesting conversations. So maybe there's a bit of engagement. Do you guys believe out there in the the Facebook, Zoom, or wherever you are? Do you believe that it's our job to paint the picture for the individual, or is it the the, the customer's um, job to do that? So is it our job? Or is it the customer's job? Um, I th so get get some um, get Our some job, bit of feedback. Bit of both. Kind of unpack that, Amanda. How how would you initiate the the bit of both? This is kind of how our morning meeting went today as well. Um, so yeah, if yeah. it's a bit of the customer and a bit of ours, if you could unpack that, that would be awesome. I I, I, I don't know, offer my opinion on it. I think that um, it would. Yeah, I, I agree with a bit of both. I think <clears> that it would be. Um, really up to us to diagnose the individual first of all yeah mm -hmm. like literally as Amanda's just said there um, tell us what they like and we can go into further detail sure. so 
really it's about knowing the individual and then being able to paint that picture back to them. April Herbert in real estate, she said, help to orientate the big picture to them. Again, guys, it actually would be really useful going off of the back of how important the discovery is. Just chuck your industry into the chat again on Facebook if you're if you're watching um, you know in, in the world out there put what, what industry you're in because um, it will just help us there um, but yeah I, I, for, for me advancing is is important to know here we go we've got some um, so uh, for me it's, a, it's important to know more about the individual themselves so that you can um, paint that picture for them like so you can actually say to them okay well this is what it's mm -hmm. going to look like um, but uh, a question for, for me to you is um, where in the sales cycle does uh, does advancing start but like where, where would you start to advance someone do yeah you think? I think that's a, a fair point and this Thanks. probably references to um, a few of the comments that we've had in there as well I think there's ways in marketing that you can certainly advance a customer prior to the conversation. I think that there's ways you can advance them to paint the picture themselves of where this potentially can go. But my belief, and, and in my opinion, I believe that the advancing starts, very similar to what we've said there about understanding the client's needs within the discovery, the consultation, the needs analysis, the strategy, whatever you, you kind of do within your industry. and. Sorry, the Facebook threw me off there. It was like, Lucas, hey, how are you? We'll um, obviously run through that. So you can show the customer what paintbrush to use. They're exactly right. Um, but I think just answering your question, Rob, I think is actually understanding the client's needs through the effective questions that we ask. Mm -hmm. And then through that, we can then start advancing from that. We, I guess that's a fair point because we, we talk about getting buy-in. Mm -hmm. So getting regular... Mm -hmm regular buy-in. One of the things that um, I wrote down in my notes from this morning when taking this to the to the team was Ryan, our director, said it's about getting regular buy-in. Mm -hmm. It's like mini sales throughout your presentation. 100%. So whether your presentation lasts for three, four, yeah, sorry, your, your sales process is three, four months, like mm -hmm. it might be in real estate, for example. It could be in a, um, a really short 20 minute conversation, but it's about getting that mini buy-in. Advancing is also known as future pacing. Okay. So it's about taking taking those little those little um, future bits mm -hmm. each stage. One thing that was interesting that came out of this morning was never never making that assumption mm -hmm. that what I would feel like oh you know um, taking you to that future state of having used our service and what they want is actually going to be very different. So coming back to what yeah. you said about the discovery was is that don't assume and paint someone a picture that you want so you know what they need exactly yeah. because if I start building a, a future that you don't actually want mm -hmm. well I'm not going to get buy-in yeah. so you know if it's we've got blinds and awnings and shutters it might not be necessarily about okay well you know, imagine that when you can block out the light well actually they might go well I actually really like the light I don't want I don't want the blinds and um, shutters to block out the light. I actually want it as a as a decor or a, de a decorative. Mm -hmm. So asking what somebody you know why do you want the, the shutters and awnings? Oh, because I want it to look good. I want to have plantation shutters because I think they look really cool. Mm -hmm. That you can then advance them based on what they're what they so want. So solution based selling then essentially just going exactly. back to that is without understanding effectively what the customer is looking for, it's hard to advance. So our best guess is going back to what we um, you know, coach consistently about not selling your favorite feature or your favorite outcome of a product or service you yeah. offer, but actually tailoring that to the, the client as well. We yeah. obviously train Mercedes. I was speaking with one of the, I don't know if Daniel's in here as well. And after the training they had, he basically understood from this client that all he wanted was Apple CarPlay. So mm -hmm. I said, what did you do and how did you manage to purchase the car and, and sell the car to the individual? He said, I sat in the car park for half an hour, went through Apple Play, said, did you want to take the car for a test drive? He went, no, that's perfect, let's just do the deal. So he was almost, he was sat in the car listening to the Apple Play. Mm -hmm. So, and, that, and would that be advancing then? Like it would be advancing by him putting the product in the customer's hands, but by him understanding the reason he wanted the Mercedes was due to the feature of the Apple CarPlay. Right. So he was in there explaining the benefits of what that will actually do for him. He didn't need to see all the gadgets and test drive the car. He just needed to ensure that, that was, yeah. that's what he was looking for. So if he'd gone the other way and gone, oh, well, let, let's go and jump in the car and drive because you'll get to feel how great it is. 
that he does, yeah, he the brakes are amazing and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Obviously, everybody wants good brakes. Let's be honest. Oh, that's but, the first thing to look for. <laughs> <on a black. laughs> but yeah, but that's just showing that through effective questioning and actually just solving a solution, that's the reason people purchase. Mm. So, in this instance, he was able to advance the customer by showing him the benefit that he was looking for. If that kind of makes sense. And I guess um, uh, Frankie's just joined us. Hey, hey Frankie, Frankie um, Lily Penny Wines. Uh, if you're um, ever uh, in. Um, uh, looking for some wine, <laughs> get, get that. Um, uh, but yeah, if, I mean, if you're in the academy, um, then maybe jump into one of the webinars that Ryan did on uh, the feature benefit mm -hmm. group because I think it's important that you build out what those outcomes are and you've got enough of them so that you can then uh, align their outcome with that advance. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's important that you build that because otherwise you're you're advancing somebody too far. Um, actually, that that's a that's a question that we did this morning. Again, I'm going to ask you, put you on the spot again. As always. Um, how how far do we go in the advance? Uh, Ryan suggested that this was something that let the customer tell you. Mm -hmm. um, but how far do you go in the in the advance? Um, I think three to six months is, is predominantly from, from our perspective, it obviously depends what you're selling. Real estate, as an example, you could be advancing so far past the sale due to the fact people hopefully purchase homes and keep them for a, for a number of years as well. So I think it's relative to the product or service that you offer. Um, for us personally, people look to get more sales, more revenue, increased conversion around that three to six month mark. So mm -hmm. I always like to really understand what that potentially can do for them but then I guess to flip on that that sort of goes back to what you're saying there understanding the client's outcome because somebody must have patience where they're happy to wait 12 months to see a return off their investment yep. where other people could be I need to see the exact point that I need to know now because I need to make sure that we make more sales in the next two weeks yeah. so it's so, hard to answer that, it's relative to the client. Yeah, so so April, who's in, in real estate, just said um, ask as many effective questions as possible, get a good idea about the client, mm -hmm. find out what they want. So if you're selling a home and maybe it's not a, an investment property, mm -hmm. that could, the advance could be your retirement. So you sure. could be talking 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah. So it's like that. Um, maybe some of the how, we've, we've uh, sorry, some of the what, we've given a lot of how today. But if, you th if you're wondering how you can um, advance, yeah, let's just say... Yeah, what sort of language patterns could you be using around that? So, I was, well, yeah, the example I was going to give for real estate was, you know, pick, picture this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so actually like, you know, and actually you can use your hands and say, well, look, pick, picture this or, you know, well, pick, picture this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's actually like, um, Jack always talks about, you know, having actually like that little um, uh, cloud thing mm -hmm. above your head, you know, yeah. in like cartoons or whatever. You know, it's basically like thinking. picture this. Yeah, yeah the yeah. thinking bubble. Um, you know, and um, it's about like, okay, ma imagine this or picture this using hypotheticals. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you were to sit in your home for, for 15 years mm -hmm. or whatever it is that they've told you, yeah. have the sound system that you require, mm -hmm. have the blinds that you want, shut mm -hmm. out the light that you need, have the, um, you know, the dentistry equipment that you're after, mm -hmm. um, whatever it is, what would that mean to you? Mm -hmm. So if you could, insert the customized response mm -hmm. what would that mean to you obviously we've got the emotive question of well how would that make you feel exactly. so you know how, how would that make you feel you're sat in your home it's a you know it's a it's a Saturday evening you mm -hmm. know glass of wine on the veranda if that's what they want mm -hmm. you know you don't yeah. want to talk about that so a lot of people make an assumption that that's what people do yeah. Some, someone might not like wine so sorry, sorry that, Frankie yeah, hopefully <laughs> not um, so kind of Speaking in hypothetics, um, future pacing in, in regards with that as well. I think another thing that personally I, I like to run through as well is actually putting somebody into already using their service. I mean, as a watching example, the first thing you do, you go in to look at a watch, they put it on your wrist, they try all the products and you like the watch, so you purchase the product as well. So depending on what you, you sell as well, like a language around what are you gonna do with X? So three months time, hypothetically speaking, you've invested in a, a, a water unit that's going to give yourself and your family a better health um, ongoing. Over the next three months with the increased energy and everything else that this product's going to do for you, what are you actually going to do with that? So something around them sort of questioning for me, then the customer starts to actually advance themselves, if oh, that okay. makes sense. So I think putting the customer in the shoes that they've already utilized the product, obviously based on the fact it's going to work and it's going to help them, 
allows them to then say, well, in three months time with the extra $10,000 that I've earned, one, one thing I would do is actually hire a marketer. Oh, okay, so, so, then, so, so you're going to the point where using sales training, for example, they've mm -hmm. used the service, mm -hmm. they've made more money, they've more, made more sales or increased their revenue, and now it's like, well, what are you gonna do with that increased revenue? Mm -hmm. So fast forward three months from today, what are you going to do with it? So actually, yeah. almost like an assumption that why wouldn't they want to use this? Well, service? I think it's belief in product too, right. right? Because the only reason that we'd be presenting a product is if we knew that was going to help a customer. Yeah, okay. So having a strong belief in taking the customer through the journey prior to even utilizing the product can be obviously very powerful to advance the... Which takes us back to the um, idea of yeah, doing a feature benefit grid mm -hmm. so that you've got the outcomes. So if they say, oh, well, it will save me time, mm -hmm. great. Yeah. What are you going to do with that time? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, because mo most services will save time, will save money or whatever. So it's like, how can that benefit the individual? How can the invest? Yeah, so you've already used it, great. Mm -hmm. Now what are we doing with it? Um, so I think that would, um, and there's a bit of a, I guess there's a bit of a theme because um, everything that we've been speaking about, you know, like uh, advancing, we, we talked about reciprocity scarcity. before, scarcity, like it's all, it's all part of the process. Mm -hmm. um, and I suppose what we spoke about a few weeks ago about third party stories, that's another really effective way to advance mm -hmm. because Very you can, true. you can talk about someone else's paints a picture. Yeah. So yeah. actually talking about someone else's experience and what they got about that's an advance. Mm -hmm. You know, that's actually saying they got that out of it. That's what they used. So I guess it's kind of all relative. It's not just about, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna advance this person. Mm. It's like, what else are you gonna use um, inside of it? So um, perhaps maybe just a, as a bit of interaction again, um, maybe we'll just, sh uh, not shout out, but put, <laughs> pop in the, in the chat, um, how can they create an advance inside of their sales process? So what, what outcomes can you start talking about for other people? Maybe just, just chuck them in the chat and take a couple of seconds to write in, you know, what, what are the outcomes and the advancement of having used your service? What are they getting from it? Um, and I think that would be quite useful to get some practicals out of this. Yeah, you know, what, how, can, how can you use, what are you gonna do with X? Mm -hmm. What would that mean to you? How would that make you yeah. feel? So maybe just think about some uh, hypothetical pictures that you can I think have. with yourself saying it's a trend as well, just for people's dates as well, the 31st of this month, uh, we've gone through our tools of influence and how to oh, yeah. ethically influence a client as well. So on the 31st of this month, me and Rob are gonna run through a one hour session uh, and we're actually gonna put all eight of the mini sessions into one um, and just compile that over the course of a one hour session. So the 31st of this month, we'll go live for one hour instead of the half an hour as well. Um, so I, I guess the, the, the main <clears throat> focus area just back on um, what whilst people are typing um, in the um, in the chat for ways to or just making notes mm -hmm. the, one of the biggest things for me will be about ownership so um, as you can read some of the comments awesome. so so for me for you guys maybe a practical is how can you create an ownership of this service so mm -hmm. for example if we're doing a demonstration of our swish academy you do it really well. You actually um, talk. <laughs> you talk about the. Um, there's a little dashboard where it has the person's name. So you actually say you can have your name there. Mm -hmm. You can have job title. Job title. Yes. Yeah, so you actually like. So I come take an ownership. The right? what? The watch thing. I'm yeah. wearing it. I'm sitting in the car. Mm -hmm. So how can you guys take uh, have have your customers see ownership mm -hmm. of it? Um, so we've got some examples in there on uh, on Zoom if you want to yeah. read them out. Um, so we've got uh, Miriana. So me, yeah. <laughs> and so Miriana says, show photos from other jobs completed with products that um, they are interested in. Uh, would this be like a third-party story? Absolutely. If somebody's looking for a same or similar service and you've assisted a client to go through that process before, then without a doubt showing what somebody else has had installed in their property or anything like that is, is so, so powerful because what we're doing there is, like what we said right at the start, is mentally painting a picture for the customer. So if they could picture their home with the blinds and you've got a picture or an example, that, that's an awesome way yep, for, awesome. for me to, to kind of show that. Stuff well. Mariana, it's good. Uh, Mr. Gorman, hello, how are we? Um, so more engagement by customers with their Customer providing more solutions, absolutely. Um, thanks, Mandy, for the energy. I think you use that 
um, will be very powerful with your benefits as well. Um, I, th I think as well, we, if we if we're getting people to take ownership, I used the example this morning of um, like virtual reality. You know, imagine like an architect showing. Okay, well these, this is the rough design that you have and actually showing them what it would look like. Not everyone's going to have a fancy, you know, 3D I to, to thing. I to interrupt though, we um, spoke with a guy interrupt. that's got a, uh, a VR uh, business now and he's actually going to do that for real estate agents too. So people can actually go to the real estate, put the VR on and actually walk around their home oh, yeah. prior to purchasing. Right. So that's going to be another... Tool so one see. of the companies we support, Superdraft, do that, and mm -hmm. they they have that where you can you can go around and have a look. I remember on the Shark Tank episode that we were on as well, or one of them, they had that mm -hmm. um, warehouse where they walk through as well. That's like advancing. That's For literally sure. taking people. We talked about booking the um, the Swish Summit, and so when uh, Lauren, our head of marketing, went up to Brizzy to have a look around the venue, the Mercure that we're going to be using, the girl was talking about how okay, you could have your banners here. You could have your entrance here. You know, you could have your little VIP area for the sharks, and you know, and it was, that's advancing. So it's like taking real ownership of, of that. Um, I think is um, is really important. I'll do you an introduction in April on that for the real estate side. That's no problem. I'll get Rob to your April's email and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we'll email that across for you. I'll do a, an introduction for the VR. No problem. Yeah. Um, uh, and then one of the other things as well. Someone asked me earlier about objection handling inside. Can you advance? I think you can, it's part in, in the relating side of mm -hmm. things. If you're relating to their objection and they say, okay, well I'm not sure if it's going to work, I'm not sure if it's for me, yeah. um, you can typically take someone and say, well, you know, imagine if you were using this later on, mm -hmm. you know, and, and if we'd seen results over the last three months, you know, let's say, you know, I always use example and tell them, we don't have a time machine, but if we could go six months from now and you'd seen results, this would be something that you would move forwards with, wouldn't sure. it? And it's also talking about, look, we haven't had the relationship of, of trust just yet, mm -hmm. but if we did, this would be something that you would be doing. So actually, like, in, a, in an objection handle, you can still advance them. Mm -hmm. Same goes with um, uh, sort of like next steps mm -hmm. in the process. Absolutely. So, How would you, you mean by that? Well, if, if someone's taking advantage of our academy, for example, and I know that they're ready to, you know, we're almost at the, at the buying line, I would actually mini advance them to, so what we're going to do is we're just going to grab some details, mm -hmm. uh, figure out you know, your username, your password, um, where the receipt of payment's going to go, we're going to then do a book a quick onboarding to make mm -hmm. sure that we go through and um, a rid bit of a roadmap, mm -hmm. um, then we're going to book your first coaching session, so it's almost like I'm painting you the picture of the next few weeks, yeah. uh, also by using the terminology around you know, getting the receipt out however your sales process the works, flows, yeah. yeah, you might get your, okay, we'll send the invoice out, mm -hmm. whatever your sales process is, you can mini advance somebody um, up every step of the way yeah. so that they, they don't feel what's coming. Because yeah. there's nothing worse sat there going, oh God, oh, what's going to happen? And then somebody goes, right, <laughs> let's pay. And you're like, ah, which is why we get a lot of stalls and objections. But if you're doing lots of little mini advancements inside of your um, clothes, for example, um, you know, get that low level commitment, talk about what the next steps are. Mm -hmm. It also removes buyer's remorse, you know, uh, we, we actually can advance to the point where somebody can wake up in the morning and feeling like, you know, okay, oh, I've just I invested. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you've never invested before. Mm -hmm. I, I coach um, uh, Sophia, Sophia Lady who does um, wigs and hair extensions, mm -hmm. you know, it's $5,000 and a lot of people sometimes think, oh, do I need to spend that kind of money? Mm -hmm. So actually once you have, she said, okay, look, how do I get them to be comfortable with their purchase? Mm -hmm. So you paint the picture of, well, you've just woken up, yeah. you've, you've spent $5,000, mm -hmm. but remember that we're here with you every step of the way. I can answer the phone call. So you really soften that, um, uh, yeah, soften that kind of uh, what's happening later yeah. on, so you can exactly. advance throughout. As, a, as another add-on while you're just reading that, Rob, as well, the, um, Another strong practical to also set up your follow-up after transaction as well, if we're obviously talking about making more sales too, we're very big on following up with the existing client as well. So around referrals and reviews will be another really powerful tool to advance the customer. So hypothetically speaking, on a monthly basis, you'll have a coaching session with somebody like Rob, who heads up the coaching department here at ISR. On that first initial call, based on your feedback as well, what Rob will be asking for is any reviews or a, a referral of people that 
you know of that can also benefit from our service too. So we're essentially planting seeds around reviews and referrals prior to even using the service as well, right, okay. um, if that makes sense. So if we can start building that in, um, that's going to build more confidence in what you do as well, but also future advance um, the customer. So when you do ask for a referral or, or even a review of your services in a month, three months, six months, whatever your follow-up process is, it doesn't come as a shock, but it also puts the conviction of what services you can deliver to the client too. I, I would hazard a guess that with the you know thousands of people that use our training, there's a few people listening going, they did that with me, um, but you, you bought the training and you're getting results. So I guess that shows that it works. But what you preach, exactly, but that, but that's what that that's the thing is like if you're talk, if you're talking with confidence about the training and we do receive a lot of referrals, mm -hmm. it's it's like well we said that's what was going to happen. So mm -hmm. yeah, you can you can take people to the point of where you're going to write a review mm -hmm. and you're gonna and you're gonna um, refer people. What it also does is plant seeds for that as well. Mm -hmm. um, just a couple of comments there. So we've got April said so try to get them April George. Um, I try to get them to sit into the product uh, and talk about camping our products while they're sitting in gives them a better imagination yeah. of how they would feel. It's perfect. Yeah. So you can literally imagine yourself in that environment and what it's going to do for you. Mm -hmm. um, Josie um, from Jim's Bookkeeping says show the client um, that they can spend more time working within their business instead of on the paperwork. So help them to understand. Yeah. Again, if that's relevant to them, yeah. um, make sure that you know increasing yeah, cash, cash flow. flow. And then maybe Josie, just to add on to that as well, with the additional time that they've got, what are they going to do with that time now? So not while you're working on the paperwork with the five hours a week you spend doing your paperwork. Now I'm actually going to take care of that. How are you going to reback invest that? Is that going to be more time with the family? Is that going to be more time working on the business, working with the team? What are you actually going to do with the extra five hours? Yeah. So. I guess recapping from before is it's just if you know what they want mm -hmm. through your effective questioning, you can advance them effectively, um, showing them the version of what they want really. Mm -hmm. And that's Absolutely. so I think to go back to our original question, I do believe that it's our job, mm -hmm. but they've got to give us something so that we can use that and, and show them and say, look, you know, if you genuinely believe in your product or a service, mm -hmm. this is what it's going to look like. Especially if you've got track record, you know, yeah. if you've got results on the board, um, yeah, if you've had one client who's used that service, you know, then then you're um, then you're in your remit to, to to share that with them. So, um, so we're we're four fifty seven Queensland time, so we've got a couple of minutes. Do you want to wrap up? Yeah, for sure. So um, obviously, what we've covered today, and again, you can go back in the academy and rewatch this, or on the socials as as we post it out as well. But the main areas that we've covered today is what advancing is how to use it and particular language patterns on how to actually advance the customer through the process too. And I'm going to do my own little bit of advancing. Picture this, next <laughs> Tuesday 4.30 you are sat in the exact same position you're in right now and you're learning all about personalization because that's what we're covering next week. Imagine that, personalization sat together all, all learning together in a wonderful Swish family. How would that make wow. you feel? How would that make you feel? Or well, that would make me feel warm and fuzzy inside. I'm picturing. Uh, yeah, I, I, I picture that. Don't picture that. Yeah. To it. Um, oh, April, oh, you're saying April's picturing. Can't wait. Awesome. Um, so, uh, as, as always, guys, if the, when you join uh, live, if you have any questions or anything uh, that you want to ask us before the session, please feel free to reach out or um, as, we, um, as we kind of wrap up today, feel free to um, message us uh, privately if there's anything that we didn't cover today. Mm -hmm. um, as Chris mentioned earlier, we're going to be doing um, a kind of a summary on the 31st. Um, next week is personalization. What else have we got left? We have social verification. Yeah. So we, we, we covered third party stories. Third but not, party stories, yeah. scarcity, likability, reciprocity. Yeah. You're testing me. Yeah, I am. Yeah, likability. The, the, the consistency. 31st, we're going to go through them all. Yeah, consistency. But yeah, that's yeah. The, but then we've got yeah. So after next week, personalization, we'll have social verification. Yeah. Third party stories was 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 kind of a um, a uh, yeah. It was kind of a all together really. Mm -hmm. Like it was so so understanding what we're going to do over the next two weeks is part of advancing. That's why we uh, that's why we say it. So Alu, thank you very much for your time, guys. Really appreciate. Thank you again um, for everyone. That, uh, you provide all of us in terms of feedback and kind words. Um, really appreciate everyone. Appreciate and just you, taking mate. taking your time too. Thank you for for taking thirty minutes on a week to 
listen to two English guys talk sales, so much appreciated. Uh, Tom Gorman said, Mission the intro, uh, can you uh, send them a, a definition? Yeah, um, that's which, no uh, problem at which all. We will. We'll get that uh, sorted. Thank you very much, guys. All Training right, guys. Tuesdays is done for another week. Thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. Take care. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you for joining us for episode 7 of Training Tuesdays. Catch us next week for personalisation.